but it was definitely a, an emergent goal of the Occupy movement in particular was just opening the public conversation and just saying, hold up for a moment, we need to step back and, and break ourselves out of this distracted state, this distracted state that's, that's a movement in itself, but it's moving in, in the opposite direction, causing more and more harm to the world. So I'm Ben Knight. Uh, I'm part of a, a software cooperative in New Zealand um, that's building a tool, an open source tool for collective decision making called Lumia. Um, so we, I mean, we emerged from the Occupy movement. So I guess that's a big part of what I bring to this discussion. A big part of me thinks that Occupy, at least at the time, did feel like it had a clear narrative. It's just that it was a distributed narrative. Um, you know, and it, it even had some form of a, of a hero narrative, uh, but it was sort of distributed heroism. You know, people often talked about it as a leaderless movement, and then people would counter that with, well, it's actually a movement with a whole lot of leadership. It's just distributed among a lot of people all at once. And in terms of, uh, you know, the term movement, whether it's appropriate to describing these social phenomena or not, the... It really did feel like, and looking back on it, it really, and, and sort of seeing what's happened since, it does feel like there has been a movement in a fairly consistent direction. And broadly defined, I would say it's a movement towards a more sustainable and equitable world. But those, those two basic elements, sustainability and equitability, just kept coming up through, through everything. And you know, that, that feels like a pretty good baseline to work with for constructing a narrative that's going to direct that mobilized energy that's just going to keep popping up more and more and with bigger and bigger spikes. And I think if, if that can be captured, you know, that with that, with that baseline foundation, you can, you can judge whether things have a net positive or net negative effect on the world by whether they, you know, they move us closer or further away from a more, more sustainable and equitable outcomes. It's, it's pretty universal that if someone's making a decision that it impacts on your life and you're not involved in it, then you're going to feel disenfranchised. So, so and, ben, I hear, ben, I hear you describing representative government. I don't like what you just said. I don't know why that's different than representative government. And, so, and to Mika's point, I think in some ways the problem is that the that the, the representative government, at least the United States, has failed us. Is not representative. So, so what it's we think of as what we think of as representative democracy in an institutionalized sense is increasingly not representative and increasingly not democratic. I mean, to be representative and democratic in a meaningful way, that's like having a genuine say in these decisions that affect you, not putting yeah. a piece of paper in a box every three or four years. So, I, I mean, I think now that we're more connected but, but I don't than think ever, that's, ever I don't before. Think that's to the, I don't think that's inherent to representative government. We can redesign representative government to be lo more local, more responsive, more, uh, more oriented around direct impact. Whatever, whatever sort of system, whatever sort of system of protocols or ecosystem of protocols um, we sort of move towards designing, I, I think it's really, it's got to be one that moves towards agreement, that moves towards building shared understanding rather than polarizing. You know, I mean, this, this sort of um, system of majority rules voting that we're so used to is just inherently polarizing, right? If 51 people want one thing and 49 want another and you go with that one and not that one, then half of the people involved are left feeling dissatisfied. But if you can have a dynamic conversation or an ongoing process where agreement builds over time, then you, you don't find yourself in that polarized position.